Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, X here with Good Clean Gaming RX and today we are back in our tutorial world uh, for the second episode in the mining eco professions. Um, today we're going to go over uh, getting set up with, uh, with the basics of mining, getting all the different equipment and everything around that you need. Uh, we're going to go over uh, best practices for transporting things from uh, your mining location up to the surface. Uh, we're going to go over how to make money in, uh, in eco, in the, uh, the mining profession, and we're going to go over uh, tool efficiency. Um, basically, uh, you know, how each of these work, what you can upgrade, what you cannot, all those different kinds of things. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into our first segment. Okay, so for this segment, I want to go ahead and talk about uh, how to get set up with mining. Obviously, for these, I've just spawned all of those right into the world and gotten them set up. Um, but for you guys, who are playing either on single player world or on a multiplayer world, uh, there's a little bit of other things that you're going to need to learn or to have done for you before you can get set up with mining. So we're going to go over those in this segment. So for crushing, you're going to need an arastra if you're first starting out, the stamp mill if you're up to tier 2, or the jaw crusher if you're up to tier 3. Each of those are made by different professions. Uh, the Arastra is made by someone with basic engineering. So, to craft one of these, they can just be made at a workbench. There we go. And we'll go ahead and pop one of those down in the world. And as you can see, those require basic engineering 1. So if you're going to play on a single player world, before you can do any crushing, you're going to need basic engineering. If you're playing on a multiplayer world, just contact someone who has basic engineering. They should be able to make one of those for you with very little issue. Um, all of these basic ingredients can be either gathered or made just on the workbench at very little expense. The other thing that you're going to need is some form of mechanical power. So you're going to need either a windmill if you're out away from water or a water wheel. Uh, both of those, however, cannot be made right off the bat. You're going to need to have a carpentry table. So the carpentry table is something that carpenters and engineers can work on. Uh, the water wheels are the easiest to make. You're going to need uh, just some boards and some, uh, some logs, some hewn logs, and those can be made by a basic engineer again. We'll go ahead and put a carpentry table here and show that. There we go. And as you can see when we come down to here, the water wheel and the windmill are both made here at the carpentry table, but they require basic engineering. Now, the sticky spot about the windmill is that it requires cloth, which is produced, of course, by a tailor. So if you're going to use a windmill, you need a tailor or tailoring and basic engineering or a basic engineer on your server or have learned those yourself if you're playing single player to really get started doing any crushing. You're also going to need a rocker box which is made here again at the workbench but again requires basic engineering. So the miner is dependent on a basic engineer and to some extent a tailor to get started with his mining adventures. Once that's done though, the miner is integral to supplying multiple different industries. Uh, a miner can supply a basic engineer with crushed rock, uh, which is used in making roads. He can also supply a smelter uh, with uh, the crushed ores, and then later, once the crushed ores have been concentrated using the rocker box, right over here, or the screening machine, or the froth flotation cell. Those can be sold then to a smelter, which he can then use to turn into iron, copper, or gold bars. The other thing that the miner is capable of making is sand concentrate. Now, this in and of itself is not particularly useful to you, but it's very useful to a mason. Uh, it can be turned into masonry mortar, 
which is quite useful for making bricks, it's useful for making mortared stone, useful for making roads, all different kinds of stuff that mortar can be used in. It's also useful to the glass worker because sand is used for making glass. And of course, once someone has smelting and you start crushing limestone, the limestone can be sold to someone with advanced smelting and a blast furnace and that crushed limestone can then be turned into cement by a mason or into quicklime by someone with advanced smelting and of course a basic engineer can use it for making stone ramps, reinforced concrete and asphalt. Let's see here, asphalt of course is basic engineering and the reinforced concrete is a mason. So there's always money to be made as a, ma as a miner you do have a little bit of setup costs, but once those are overcome, it's quite easy to make money in mining. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll, uh, we'll pop down here for right now. I'm going to show you the basic setup um, that I use for getting things from the bottom to the top and vice versa quickly. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fly up to the top here. Okay, so here is my stockpile. Um, it is uh, about 10, maybe a little bit less blocks from this small stockpile that I've set up here, which is again 10 or less blocks from this small stockpile or large, large stockpile there that I've set up there. Okay, so I've also made myself a little rock uh, staircase to get up here. As you can see, that's about 8 blocks from that one. And then I can get up here as well to come over to this one. The important bit is that, is that you can reach this stockpile here from this one and that this one can be reached from your other one as well. So we're going to go ahead and mm, let me just go ahead and we'll, we'll make up some space here. There we go. There we go, that's got a little bit of space in there for us to move things around. We'll go ahead and we'll use this screening machine here as well and concentrate some dry iron. Let's go ahead and do uh, 30 of those. There we go, and do the work. All right, And that'll give us a little bit more space. So as you can see, we've got some tailings in here, some tailings in there, and we're going to move some stuff up from our stockpile down below to up here. So we'll go down here, pick up a couple of, of uh, rocks here and mine those out. And put those into our storage here quickly. As you can see, those have arrived here and we can see the tiny stockpile from this stockpile location. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to climb up here to this tiny stockpile. And now you can see we can see both of them. The stockpile down there with our iron ore and the stockpile up here on the top. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to drag these, just holding the middle or the left mouse button and dragging those over. Now that'll move, move those from the bottom one to the top. This tiny stockpile is really just a jumping off point that allows you to access both of those stockpiles. And then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing with the tailings. We'll just drag those right down to here. And that's removed those from the surface. Oop, there's another one. That's removed those from the surface. And they are now down here where they can be safely disposed of. So that moves us on to our next part, tailings disposal. So I am currently about, uh, let's see here, eight there and then another eight up to the top about 16 uh, blocks below the surface. Uh, the top of this one is probably only about 11, uh, but that is a safe distance. That's where you start seeing uh, some of the tailings reduction. If you really want to be safe though, the best way to do this is to go uh, a little bit farther down. So I'm going to go ahead and mine out a little bit of an area here. And I just wanted to show you too how far um, this this iron ore goes uh, we're talking 
quite a major vein here as you can see it, it just keeps going um, yeah quite large and this is this is several blocks deep at this point um, so all the iron ore that you'd ever need um, on a single player world at least <laughs> multiplayer there's quite a bit more of a demand um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drop down a couple blocks here and uh, we'll put these right about down here is going to be your, your starting area uh, let's see here I'm currently down th down to block 38 um, so this would be a good area to store your tailings we'll go ahead and go up to the surface here and we'll see how much of a difference that is if we go all the way up to the top uh, we're currently at block 65 so there's quite a difference there 65 to 38 is uh, what 27 blocks um, right around there and at that depth uh, you're getting a lot less of the tailings leakage. Um, if we were to fast forward the world here you'd see uh, with these tailings a little bit of leakage up the top. Um, 10 below is where you start to see reduction. Uh, you do have to have solid undisturbed rock uh, for those 10 blocks in between your tailings and the top of the world or the top, top uh, surface that you're burying under. So at this point those are quite a bit safer. Um, but if you want a total, a, or as, as much as you can, those need to be buried all the way down to like 40 blocks below the surface. So it can be, uh, it can be quite a bit deeper to get those safely contained. Okay, and uh, that's going to wrap up um, tailings. And uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next subject. Okay, so for this subject, I wanted to go over some of the other um, resources that you can really use uh, to make money in game as a miner. So one of those is limestone. Uh, this can be used in your uh, in your rastra or other crushing device and crushed into crushed limestone. Uh, that would be this stone right here is is limestone. Um, the crushed limestone is used uh, late game um, once someone has unlocked advanced smelting um, and it's used to make quick lime. So limestone is another resource that you can use. Obviously all of the ores can be used to make money rather quickly, um, especially if you've got smelting as well as mining. Uh, there's always a demand for iron and other metals. Um, on a server, I've never really gotten on and gone, oh, there's there's too many of those here. Um, so there's always opportunity for those to be used. Um, you can also use, uh, use your mining skill to dig out coal. That's again found in the wetlands. As I mentioned in the last video, coal is, is uh, always in demand by cooks and smelters because it's used for firing uh, both the, the cooking devices and uh, the blast furnace later in game and of course it's always used late game when you start producing electricity um, as a fuel uh, for using in your electrical generators okay so for this segment I wanted to go over crushing efficiency and uh, mining efficiency and really efficiency of machines in general. Um, so for your Arastra, your basic starting uh, crush facility, uh, it's capable of crushing all of the tier 1 ores. Um, so that would be your iron ore, your gold ore, your copper ore, and then of course your granite, limestone, sandstone and shale, your tier 1 uh, stones. Um, so all of those could be crushed. Uh, the Arastra uses uh, 12 to produce 2 uh, with all of these concentrations so you have a 6 to 1 ratio of ore or your standard rock uh, to get well except for granite this one looks like it has a 4 to 1 
because you use three granite and get three crushed granite. Um, so for your ores, it's a four, uh, sorry for your ores, it's a six to one ratio. For your standard stone, you have a four to one ratio. For your arastra, um, there is no benefit uh, for having a module in here except for for speed. These are static values and cannot be affected by a modifier, as you can see by the yellow text right there. So you cannot reduce the number of ore or the base rock that are required um, for getting this output. If we come over here to my other crush facility, let's see here, the stamp mill. There we go. We'll come over here to the stamp mill. This one has a little bit of a better ratio. This one has a 5 to 1. As you can see, 20 required for output. So you have a 5 to 1 ratio. Again, no modification as to the value or the number required. Um, it's just the amount of time that is required that gets reduced by the modifier in the crushing machines. Um, and this holds true, this, uh, this crush amount holds true the 4 to 1 ratio, or 5 to 1, sorry. Ooh, there is a bit of a difference. So there you go, a 5 to 1 ratio for your uh, crushed ores, and a 4 to 1 ratio for your crushed rock uh, with, uh, with the stamp mill. That'd be your tier 2 stamping machine or crushing machine. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to come over here to the jaw crusher. Um, obviously that kind of just moves into there and gets crushed down below. And here you have the best. Uh, this is where you start to see a 4 to 1 ratio uh, with the ore to the output. Still 20 required, but it will get you 5 crushed ore instead of 4 that you would have in the stamp mill. Um, the crushed rock remain unchanged, 4 to 1 is the best that you can get there. But that's still a pretty good ratio, it basically means you can get a crushed rock for every block that you mine out of the ground. And uh, essentially means the same thing when you get up here with the jaw crusher. Um, the jaw crusher runs on electricity, so you will have to have a steam engine, uh, or a combustion generator, or a solar generator or a wind turbine to make that um, or to operate these but you do get quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of a jump there in efficiency um, the stamp mill and the screening machine both use mechanical power just the windmills there or the water wheels if you happen to be near water those will work for running both of those and the arastra and the rocker box Got one of those somewhere around here. The Arastra and the Rocker Box both use mechanical power also, and so as long as you've got some uh, some windmills or some water wheels, both of those will work. Okay, when it comes to the separating uh, the Rocker Box, we'll go ahead and pop one of those into the world here. There we go. Uh, the Rocker Box also uses mechanical en energy. Uh, this is used for making copper concentrate, gold concentrate, iron concentrate. Uh, the ratios in these ones are a bit rough at first. Uh, these can be increased, or sorry, the, the cost reduced. So this is a dynamic value, as you can see from the green here, and you can reduce these. So we'll go ahead and give ourselves one of each of the basic modules and we'll show you how the progression works on those. Okay, so without an upgrade, you have a seven to one ratio between your concentrate for both for copper. So seven copper ore will get you one copper concentrate. A 10 to one ratio for gold, 10 crushed gold ore will give you one gold concentrate. And a five to one between crushed iron ore and one iron concentrate. Once you start sticking the modules into there, we'll go ahead and put the basic one into there. That'll reduce costs by 1%, or center, sorry, 10%, and that now requires 6.3. As you can see, that's affected by the dynamic value. 
and you start to get this green outline to let you know that there's a modifier there. So gold goes down to 9, copper down to 6.3 and iron goes down to 4.5. If you swap this in with the basic upgrade 2, it's a reduction for 25%. You now require 5.25 copper ore to one copper concentrate. 8 or 7.5, there we go, 7.5 crushed gold ore to one gold concentrate and you now only require 3.75 crushed iron ore to one iron concentrate. And this just continues as you continue to put better modules in. This reduces cost by 40%, as you can see 4.2 down from 7, 6 down from 10 and 3 down from 5. And then of course you can put your 4, that reduces cost, oops, let's just take one of those, there we go, and that reduces cost by 45% for both resource and craft time, and you have 3.85, 5.5, .5, and 2.75 for each of your crushed ingredients. This can be further improved with a mining basic upgrade to reduce costs to 50%. So you'll have 3.5, 5 even, and 2 even for that. Oh no, sorry, 2.5 for that. Once you've put a basic upgrade 4 into there. And that uh, pattern repeats with each of the upgrade machines. The screening machine of course is only good for concentrating the dry iron ore but you can put your basic modules into there and reduce these down until you get quite a decent return on those. The floth flotation, uh, froth flotation cell, that's a bit of a tongue twister there, uh, benefits from the same thing. These do require a different module though. They require the modern upgrade modules. One, two, three, four, five, the mining modern upgrade. And you can get quite a reduction on those. Right, and that's it for modules on these. Let's go. Ahead. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching this episode of the Eco Professions videos. I hope this has been helpful. If there's anything that I've missed, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Or if there's anything more that I can expand on, uh, please feel free to leave a comment or of course contact me on my discord channel uh, the link for which is down below all right ladies and gentlemen thanks again for watching stay tuned for the next professions video and i will see you guys then ta-ta